Andrew Shore here on location at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting in Chicago, ASCO, where we've had 30,000 cancer experts here. Part of the discussion, of course, has been on breast cancer. We wanted to find out a perspective on the news and some important research on understanding side effects. We spoke just a little while ago with Penn Medicine's Dr. Angela D. Michelle, a breast cancer specialist. Dr. D. Michelle, what is the research about aromatase inhibitors and its significance for patients presented here? Well, aromatase inhibitors are a very important class of drugs that we use in breast cancer for women who have tumors that are estrogen receptor positive. And this is a class of drugs that right now we use in postmenopausal women and are being studied even in premenopausal women. And these drugs work by inhibiting an enzyme called aromatase. And this is an enzyme that's very, very important in postmenopausal women. They don't make estrogen in the ovaries, so the only source of estrogen is from peripheral tissues. And in the peripheral tissues, in fat cells and in the breast, aromatase converts androgens into estrogens. And those estrogens have the ability to stimulate cancer cells. So inhibitors of aromatase actually inhibit the enzyme and prevent the estrogen from being formed. So we embarked on a large-scale study within in the Abramson Cancer Center to try to understand this phenomenon in women who are taking the aromatase inhibitors. And so we studied 500 postmenopausal women taking the medications. And lo and behold, we found that about 50% of the women had some degree of arthralgia or joint pain. Uh, and that um, that actually compares very favorably to other groups, a group in New York, other groups in the United States who have looked at the frequency of the side effects. So it's a very common side effect, although it's only severe in about 15% of the women who take the drug. It's bothersome to a great many more than that. So we started to look at, well, what might be causing this? Because if we could try to get at what the mechanisms are, then we could start to think about how we might treat it. And when we started to talk to women about what they were experiencing, we realized that we needed good tools. So we developed some questionnaires and some very sensitive scales that would enable us to really characterize this phenomenon of arthralgia. And when we started to talk to women, we found that it was the women who were actually on the younger side of the postmenopausal spectrum, women who were closer to the time that they'd been through their menopause, that actually was the group of women who are most likely to get this side effect. And when we looked at the medical literature among women who weren't on aromatase inhibitors but are going through normal menopause, it turns out there's a very similar phenomenon. Many women going through natural menopause actually have joint pain or arthritis. And that's thought to be due to this phenomenon of estrogen withdrawal that as a woman goes through menopause and their estrogen levels start to go down, the receptors in the joints and in the pain areas of the brain actually start to feel this loss of estrogen. And that's the trigger, that's what's causing this. The theory was that if you had the genes that made your estrogen levels higher at baseline, you had farther to fall when you started taking the aromatase inhibitor. So we studied several of these things called polymorphisms. They're actually just variations in the gene code that actually make women produce more estrogen. And we found that the women who had the genetic variants that caused them to have higher estrogen levels actually got more severe arthralgia. Now at Penn and the Abramson Cancer Center, you have an emphasis on cancer survivorship. Why is that so important nowadays? Well, I think the, the wonderful thing that I've seen um, in the course of my career is that our treatments are more and more effective in helping people conquer cancer. And we are identifying cancer early. We have effective treatments. And so more and more people are surviving their breast, their breast cancer as well as all kinds of other cancers. Dr. Michelle, for a long time, and we increasingly talk about it, we're learning about the biology of individual tumors and ways to fight the cancer better in that person. Are we now saying that there are individual differences we can look for to predict whether someone will have side effects? So, you know, they're a little bit different sides of the same coin. So when we start to identify 
features of an individual that make them more sensitive to a medication, well, that sensitivity may mean that the tumor is more sensitive, but it also may mean that the individual is more sensitive to the side effects. So they really are two sides of the same coin. And so in some ways, having symptoms may be a sign that your treatment's going to be more effective. And we don't necessarily want to interrupt the the very mechanisms that are helping to fight the cancer. So we have to come up with very creative ways to treat symptoms that are occurring because treatments are effective. One last question. A lot of people look at you or whoever their breast cancer specialist is and see how you're feeling about things to see whether they should feel hopeful about treatments for breast cancer. We are in a period of incredible growth and discovery in breast cancer. We understand the disease better than we ever have, and at every meeting I attend, we learn more and more about the biology of the disease, how it's going to behave, and who are the patients who need aggressive treatment, who are the patients who maybe don't need as aggressive treatment. Um, so I am very excited about the things that are happening in this field. I feel that um, there is a very good chance that we will see a cure of breast cancer for once and for all in my lifetime. And, um, and so we just continue to work towards that goal. It's not gonna come in one big bang. I think it's going to be small incremental steps that help us continue to understand the subgroups, the special populations of breast cancer so that we can really tailor our therapies to each individual woman's disease and be able to give her the best possible outcome. Encouraging news for people concerned about breast cancer. In Chicago, I'm Andrew Shore.